Hello, and welcome back to DCC++. In a previous set of videos, we explored in detail how an Arduino Uno and an Arduino Motor Shield can be combined to create a DCC++ base station that can be connected directly to the tracks of a model railroad. As described, only two modifications in the form of jumper wires were required. The first jumper wire connects pin 10, where the UNO produces a DCC logic signal, to pin 12, which controls the direction of output channel A, producing a DCC bipolar signal that can be connected to the main operations track. The second jumper wire connects pin 5, where the UNO produces a second DCC logic signal, to pin 13, which controls the direction of output channel B, of the motor shield, producing a DCC bipolar signal that can be connected directly to the programming track. In this brief video, we explore how an Arduino Omega 2560 can instead be used instead of an UNO to create a DCC++ base station. There are two main reasons why you might want to use an Arduino Mega instead of an Uno. First, maybe you already have an Arduino Mega and you don't have an Arduino Uno. There's no reason to wait to buy an Uno to get started creating a DCC++ base station. Secondly, though the Mega is backwards compatible with the Uno, it contains a number of additional features that allow for more extended DCC++ functionality. The most obvious extension is that of the board itself. The Mega contains three extra headers of pins. There are 10 extra analog input pins on the bottom, and there are eight additional I.O. pins at the top, some of which can be used for serial communication. These pins make it easy to add a Bluetooth board, converting your DCC++ base station into a wireless DCC++ base station. But perhaps most importantly is this double row header on the side that produces an additional 32 digital pins. These can be used to connect track sensors, servos, or other accessories such as RGB light strips. On my own layout, I use an Arduino Mega instead of the Uno since I have 14 track sensors and one RGB light strip, and there just aren't enough unused digital pins on the Uno to connect that many devices. But with the Mega, there are plenty of free pins to spare. Another big difference between the Mega and the Uno is memory. The Mega has built in 256 kilobytes of flash memory for storing programs, which is eight times more than the 32 kilobytes of flash memory of the Uno. And though the size of the entire DCC++ code base is much less than 32 kilobytes, the extra flash memory of the Mega allows you to create additional code to drive other accessories, such as an RGB light strip, as well as provide ample room to create custom and complex automation routines to control your layout without the need for a separate computer. This type of automation can be seen in one of my previously uploaded videos. The Mega also has eight kilobytes of SRAM versus only two kilobytes for the Uno. SRAM is used by Arduino programs to store all runtime variables, and the additional SRAM is needed when your layout utilizes many track sensors and turnouts. It is also very helpful in storing variables and structures that support any customized automation routines you might add to the code. Another plus is that the Mega has four kilobytes of EEPROM versus only one kilobyte for the Uno. The DCC++ base station code utilizes EEPROM memory to store and retain the settings for turnouts and other accessories, even when the power is off. The more EEPROM, the more settings can be stored. And finally, the Mega includes five counter timer circuits versus only three for the Uno. Though DCC++ only requires two timer counter circuits, one to produce DCC signals for the main operations track and one for the programming track, the extra timers on the Mega can be put to good use in constructing customized automation routines that require sequencing or built-in delays, such as having a train pause and then reverse direction after a period of time. So now that you know about all of the extras you get with the Mega, let's see how you hook it up. Though the Mega 
has all of these additional pins. The Arduino motor shield fits right on top, just as it does for the Uno. The only difference is that all of the Mega's extra pins are accessed directly through the headers on the Mega board, rather than through the headers on top of the motor shield. With that done, there are only two small modifications we need to make. This is because the specific timers used by the DCC++ to generate our DCC logic signals on the UNO are hardwired slightly differently on the Mega. Whereas the logic signal for the programming track is output from pin 5 on the UNO, the same signal is output from pin 4 on the Mega. This need, means we need to move this side of the jumper wire from pin 5 to pin 4. That was easy. But even easier is the modification we need to make for the DCC logic signal produced for the main operations track. On the UNO, it's output from pin 10, but on the Mega, it's output from pin 12. However, pin 12 is also the pin that controls the direction of channel A of the motor shield, which means that this jumper wire is no longer needed. All other connections are the same. Power is supplied to the motor shield through these two terminal pins. Connections to the main operations track are made using these two terminals. And connections to the programming track are made using these two terminals. And remember, if you power the board with more than 12 volts, Arduino recommends you cut the powered connection trace on the other side of the motor shield so that you are not powering the mega with the higher voltage that you're supplying through this. And that's everything you need to do to create a DCC++ base station with an Arduino Mega 2560. Thanks for watching.